Welcome to my first ever video. This is a take on a CD TV that can be used in a modern home setting. As at the end of the video you will see I also changed the display to widescreen. I know a lot of the community hate it but it just looked right for the setting. But with it being my first video you will notice I refer to the CD TV as a CD32 a few times and yes that's making me making massive clangers of mistakes. I would like to thank Stephen of Checkmate Cases, Edu Arana, Steve of Retro Passion, Paul Jarvis, eBay Aid 2007, Adrian from Precut because without this we could not make this happen. All the links to these items used and anything else needed is in the description below. So my next project is to modernize a CD32 without making it too upgraded. So I have got from Edu Arana, Arananet, the CD32 video board, mainly because one, it gives me a 15 kilohertz output and an extension cable so I can use RGB to HDMI. The SD card is of no use because it's literally the SD for like the network card etc from the Vampire but obviously not going to use any of that. I used Edu's 3D printed bracket he made and obviously got it altered with the hole for the HDMI. I then have SCSI card for the CDTV. I'll be using the external device instead of the internal so I don't have to move things around and your good old on off switch. We have the 8 meg expansion for the proper port of the CD TV. That will go in and give me the extra 8 meg fast RAM that I require. We have a RGB to HDMI adapter. is the dual 1.3 3.1 ROM from Sodan and literally with a switch so that can go on the back so it can be original and modern. To go with that the 2.3 extended ROMs for the CD well actually for the A570 so basically in putting these in, it breaks the weight can write to a memory card at the front. But I don't have a memory card, so and there's hardly any things that need it for bookmarks as well, so not too bothered. Might change it out if they do a hybrid of version 2 in the future. That was the 3.1 ROM I got just in case. <coughs> got spares of everything. There's a good old Raspberry Pi to fit onto the RGB to HDMI converter. And the Sum Up CD32 keyboard adapter to HID USB. The adapter for the mouse and joystick, port 1, port 2, for the CDTV. And then 
used with a TOM2 adapter. So tested on my CD32, so we'll work on the CD TV, is a 2.4 gigahertz adapter, which looks like the SNES controller, but works with the CD32, so should work with a CD TV. And basically, it already has the adapter in there, in my TOM2. So basically, that works on my CD32. So when it comes to it, I'll plug that into the port 2 and off it goes. I'll put a normal TOM2 with a normal Logitech mouse into the other one so we get both. Obviously in mouse mode, the IR controller will still work. <coughs> hey, this beauty. So normal 2.4 adapter, all mechanical switches. I'd already swapped it for two keys off my PS2 keyboard for my CD32 but all of these will change to Stevens Checkmate keycaps because it's an ANSI keyboard. So this will all be Amiga based very shortly. I will update the video with the bits with this on there. I will be using from Amiga Kit the 5.5 SCSI to SD adapter, which is just a normal 25 pin powered from the actual card, micro SD card in there. And currently, at the moment, because this was off my A570, this one has 3.1.4 on there, which won't work because I'm only going 3.1, so I'll have to update that one. But again, that's the device I'll be using on the back. And then obviously for retro, I still have the good old CD TV remote. So literally it can do all of my bits that I require. So otherwise it is very good. The original Good old CD TV black CD one four one one drive. All working, all tested, all good. I also have a wider angle now because it's a bit big to fit in the screen. I have the full CD TV keyboard. But the reason for not using it is if I'm sat metres and metres and metres away, it's not really long enough. And in this day and age, who wants wires coming across when you want it to be a piece of equipment which should be under your TV? So this will be all pristinely kept and used very frequently, but we'll make it so we can use it under the TV. And then we have the actual unit. Move the screen out of the way. Because he's a big old beast. The good old CD TV. this open and start putting in so inside the nice and clean CD TV so we literally have ROM, ROMs, and the other bit for the internal plus we need to move him for the RGB. So let's slowly start putting in.
um, expansion. Nicely, push down, and there he is, all seated, RAM expansion done. Right. Let's see how long this is. Is it that way? It is that way as well. Perfect. So if that was in there, yeah, he'll reach the back. So. Obviously we'll be able to test it to just prove it's definitely showing the right one with the jumper here because obviously with that off it disables these which ultimately I'll be doing a switch from that to the back as well so for any game what's picky and can't run with one meg with the CD you can get it out. So now the Denise. So, I'm going to use a slightly different modified version, which is like so, because of, we have a clearance issue. If we put that in there, what you will see is that it's right up to there. Some take this off and lay it down here so they've got more clearance, but I'd rather not because I'm not great at soldering, you'll have seen that from the other ones. So what I want to try and do is have the unit in here somewhere, but sensibly placed. So I have two types of cables. I have this one where I've sewed that off. And I have <coughs> somewhere here, wherever it is, oh. a flat one. Which has been done so i can test either one and maybe it's a bit tight but maybe i can shove that one through into there and have it in the void with my card but we'll test that we'll see how it behaves so now we just need to get this in and there we go I've also got an adapter for that, which I can put in and bend at will to get where I need to be. So we'll put this back in where it needs to be. So literally, with that, you literally have just the clearance to shut the case, just. If you had a pie on the other side, not a lot. So none of this needs to change. As I said, I'll make a jumper for that just to test it. Yeah, but we've got uh, HDMI into an adapter here so I can I can tinker with bits so it can play. So I'll put this on here for now. Which hopefully will fit with this thing. in the way like so and then we can see what we can get out of a raspberry pi and everything else and make sure it's actually doing what it's supposed to do for the old-fashioned way for now just to double check things before i change the board because if you change the board which is the rf if you don't get one that works, it disables RGB. Right, 
Right, we have a flashing zero, 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 zero on the front. Let's have a go. What do we get? And we get... Wait for it, because I haven't got the floppy connected. 1.3. Right. So, turn him off. Flip the switch. Turn him back on. Wait, because it will be disabled and waiting because of the floppy not being plugged in the back. 1.3. No, 3.1. Read the screen. Dipstick. So, so he works. So now, leave it back as 1.3 for the moment. Power jumper back on the board. And turn it on, and we should have CDTV ROMs. Dingo! And no floppy connected, no red screen. So these are the ones where they've been slightly altered to make them not do a red screen of death. So, sorted. So we try it with the switch the other way, just to be doubly sure. Dink. And there we go. But that's running. Plus, if I show you, yeah. so good old workbench 1.3 in the caddy. If you put that into the drive, with that being as 3.1, that should boot up with the solid bars, not the individual bars. Thank you. Right. <coughs> So, as it starts to load, this is in real time. It should show you 3.1 because it's solid and not the other way around. Obviously that's off because it's not plugged in. So I'll flick it the other way. Turn them on. Booting up. Now you'll see the individual bars to prove it's in 8 megs already there because it shows us 9216000 currently so that's fine obviously df0 bad because it's physically not connected so yeah and obviously i'm assuming that only shows up because of these new roms expecting a floppy drive regardless but anyway it works it boots and ultimately the cd will be used only purely for the odd game and nothing else really or transferring files to it so yeah so now Let's get a pie ready and see if we've got HDMI out. Right, so we have Raspberry Pi. So let's connect him up to the ribbon. But then obviously it's not full size HDMI, so mini to full size. So whack him in there. 
and in there. Oh. So, can't be way your screen so you can see it. Still see the screen? Yep. Right. Moment of truth. Do we get anything or not a sausage? I would suggest that's not a sausage. Okay. Hmm. Okay. He's all in. He's in there, and that was working through, so we've not got that wrong. So have I put this on the wrong way? So he would have gone on that way. So is it maybe I put the pie on the wrong way? Uh, could have been, because I am that stupid. Ha, I put the pie on the wrong way, because I am that stupid. And we have, way, and there we go. Fully working, off ribbon cable, Bosch. All happy bunny. So yeah, so we have RGB out, which obviously I'll hope to use that so I can get it underneath. So we've got spare room because I don't really want it in here anywhere. Yep. I've got cable to make from there back out so I can switch on and off and I can also switch this on and off which he'll quite happily go around there and out back. <coughs> all right Meg is in. Don't need to touch any of this because all is happy bunny. Yep. Um, hopefully this will keep ticking for enough time as I need it to. <laughs> so yeah. And overall, it's not bad. I've got the two RCA cable out as well, which will go to the amplifier in the family room to where it'll be situated in the end. And yeah, everything so far, so good, is happy. So the next stage is the video card out, new one in, the blank removed and the SCSI card in, then literally see if he's happy to boot, which he will do, but he'll moan, because that's 3.1.4. So he'll just have a right paddy that workbench is missing and all sorts. So, but it'll still try. And then, once all that is in place, then we can play with peripherals to make sure that works, and all the rest of them work, and then we have a nice CDTV to go in a lounge where it can be used from a distance. Happy Bunny, but if you want to use the old remote, you can still use the old one to make it more funky. Yeah, and in all fairness, with the instructions I've seen for this, if it got on your nerves to change over, you can just push that. So, all in all, that I would suggest is a good, good good job at the moment we just now need the last few bits to be done so i'll be back shortly and we'll do the back right so scuzzy card in Bits of dust out. Is that it? Yes. Right, slide away. In he goes. All nice. I'll take out the video for now. Because we're putting the other one in shortly. With a few buttons attached. And try and get the Raspberry Pi underneath. 
insulated as well so it doesn't show off the case at the bottom. So the old normal Commodore TV modulator card. Right, let's get the scuzzy screwed in. It's a case of trying to get this in here, in the gap, which I'm assuming for flipping them over. Right, after a lot of swearing and pain in the hands, trying to get everything sorted. We now have GPIO round cable in and round. The two connectors for the push button, the switch for the disable ROMs and the ROM switcher in working. On the back I'll show a photo. And now basically I've got HDMI on the out, RGB just to test it worked, it did. <coughs> so I've literally got left hand side switch is for the ROMs on and off, right hand side switch is for ROM switch and the button just below the VGA connection for 15 kilohertz is the on screen display for the RGB to HDMI. So if I now turn him on, boot him up, you will see a HDMI picture and it will boot up into 1.3 as a 1.3 ROM with obviously the extended all built in and I've got the funky remote. <coughs> so I'll show this going and then We'll, I'll come back to it later, it'll obviously be dark at that point, and then the lights will still be the same though, but we'll get this done, get it all set up, play with the likes of the SCSI and everything else, see how that behaves, and then work from there, so yeah, so it's in. It's all nice, everything fits in, case shuts, so it's all good. Um, RAM's happy, switch is happy, happy, and all the other gubbins are at the back, which is clever enough. So the Raspberry Pi is actually in the hole underneath for where the switches and stuff are, so it's out of the way. CD-ROM obviously, cable, happy bunny, but you've seen it's boot. So yeah, so everything else is as was other than RAM, that, that, and just putting a switch on. And the only thing we did take out was <coughs> the modulator, purely because when that's in, one, I didn't want to cut any of this or remove any of it to uh, give me HDMI. So it was a case of leave that stock, get the CD32, uh, CD32, CDTV, card from Edo Arana which was literally just 15 kilohertz out, SD slot for SD, IEP etc for network cards etc and then literally all we've got is take it out put the other one in brings your RGB back to life and I've got HDMI out RGB out 15 kilohertz VG out. Out of all of those is fine but again most of mine will be literally HDMI out to my amp, 
the two phonos out to my amp and then literally my Onkyo amp can just control everything and I'll have a big CD TV on my family room setup but again it looks aesthetically pleasing for that setup whereas a CD32 which I have too would not so anyway let's come back shortly once it's all screwed back together So, number two, let that build up, as I've got the instructions of how to use the thing to activate it. So, it says we push the fire button which is blue and move it and it should kick in. Ah, press the start button first, for the light to come on. Aha! So basically I charged it and still didn't push the button to wake it up, even though it shows a power button, because I'm stupid. One day, one day, it'll be planned. So now, he's all doing. What's weird is that asks for a book and the answer, but it's original discs and it just... Yeah. So, anyway, so we'll exit on there, I'm not going to change anything. We'll just see if it actually plays. I think it tells me to go get stuffed. So, I'm not going to click tunes because I've not got anything plugged into the RCAs, so won't do a lot. This will ask me to swap discs, ding, 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 ding. But as soon as it starts, I think you accelerate and it just goes and goes way too quick and then just don't work. which I'm assuming is either 3.1 ROM or fast ROM where it just says meh, had enough and I'm looking to get a Noctua fan for the back instead of the one that's going winding me up since I can get one for 13 quid I just need to get the right conversion to plug it on the board So I'll do that before it goes in the AV cabinet because it'll wind me up so much. Yeah, I've all the ripper load. Tick, tick, tick. Discord. And I think if I press it, it goes bananas and just crashes. I think as this goes go, it goes way. And I've done the whole thing in 0.14 of a second. That is impressive. So that is crap. So what we'll try is we'll take him out. I can't remember if these work or not, but we'll have a go. Sort of. Joystick still working, so player one, select a level. Something. <laughs> I'll put my hands up here so you can see the buttons. So fire up, left, right. That's it. Okay. Get ready. Ooh. Eh? How's that work?
I'd love to know what I'm touching what's killing me but as you can see it is quite happily moving The moment has arrived. Old keys. New keys. From good old Stephen at Omeka. Checkmate, 1500 plus. Ansi keycaps. Let's go. And there they are. So yeah, as he says, they're a, a grey, not a jet black, but that's not bad at all. So yeah, so it's all good. <clears throat> so yeah, so he's replaced the alt with the Windows key, which is fine. So that is correct the way this goes. So a bit of remapping on the key map, but otherwise all is good. And then obviously we've got keys, end, delete, insert, home, print, scroll lock. <coughs> obviously that's not used. And then these. Right. Let's start. And I drop one on the floor as you normally do. <clears throat> so we have those as spares, but we now have a completely black, although grey, but that's the good aesthetics, Amiga <clears throat> keyboard. Is impressive and if you turn it on lights up but lights up nice with a nice hue behind the keys only which would be cool on a night so if we turn it off a bit does it show up nicely a nice glow around the keys nice So I would highly recommend Stephen for his lovely keycap for an Ansi keyboard because it just tops off the keyboard to make sure it looks like an Amiga which it will be used on an Amiga and we like it. Okie dokie. So I've moved from using the 5.5 because whatever I do it corrupts pretty much instantly on here and needs the 5 volt to power it for some unbeknown reason just off here but works fine on an A570 but I now have the good old 5.2 from Amiga kit yeah and everything so far is copied over and working but I had to copy it folder by folder one at a time and double check because it does corrupt itself when you try and do it but looking everywhere everyone on the web has the same issues with the SCSI to IEC on Amigas everyone who tries to copy any decent amount of data to it corrupts crashes dies so literally it's card out into WinUE boot it up 
copy a couple of files over, put it back in, check it, make sure it's got no errors and corrupt blocks, put it back in, and vice versa. So I've literally copied over demos, copied over games A through to Z, all the way through one by one, plugging it in to check as it goes. And at the moment it's just running state of the art just to keep pushing and pushing and pushing to test that nothing crashes in between. Then literally the case comes tomorrow so I'll get it all put together get this video finished and show it in its situation all working and then finally after weeks this has took nearly a week to sort out this annoying problem that you can't copy anything to it without it bombing every five minutes <clears throat> and then we'll go from there I do hope you've enjoyed this video and has sparked some interest into your own retro interests. If you would like to help and support this channel to grow, please check out our Patreon page. Thanks for watching.
radioactive.